Hey everyone, and welcome to another Kill All Games Raw review. This time, I'm going to be talking about Wild Bastards, the spiritual successor to developer Blue Manchu's Void Bastards, which came out, I believe, five years ago. Void Bastards was inspired by System Shock 2 and Bioshock, so it was set on a space station and had certain immersive sim qualities that led to emergent gameplay opportunities while progressing through its campaign. Wild Bastards is different in that, while it still has some immersive sim qualities, this is more of a strategy shooter, and it also introduces more roguelike elements. Now, that kind of sounds like a bunch of buzzwords just thrown together, and even at first, I was cautious of Wild Bastards. I don't mind roguelikes, but over the last decade, or actually even 15 years at this point, roguelikes have kind of become a go-to for indie games. I understand the appeal because a roguelike offers endless opportunities so you can have virtually millions of different level configurations or enemy layouts or what have you. Wild Bastards isn't strictly like that. Before I get into that discussion though I'm gonna read you the synopsis on the Steam page and show you some clips and whatnot to see if Wild Bastards is a type of game that will work for you. As someone that's strictly into boomer shooters I would definitely say set your expectations accordingly because Wild Bastards is most definitely not a boomer shooter. As the Steam store page reads, from the veteran team behind Void Bastards and Card Hunter, Wild Bastards has you travel from planet to planet to recruit, manage, and gunsling with a team of 13 outlaws each of whom has their own weaponry, special power, and growth tree. On planets, you'll wrangle loot and start showdowns that are then played out in intense, bite-sized shootouts. The Wild Bastards were the most deadly gang in the galaxy until a posse from the puritanical magnate Jebediah Chase eliminated one outlaw after another. Faced with their own mortality, the two remaining members have teamed up with the Drifter, a mysterious sentient spacecraft, to find and resurrect the dead gang members as they flee to the mythical homestead. Now, a lot of this doesn't actually factor too much into Wild Bastards. If you're familiar with Void Bastards, you'll know that developer Blue Manchu has a penchant for creative writing and interesting world building. And surprisingly, Wild Bastards doesn't have that much going on. Obviously, the plot that I just read you is pretty much it. That is exactly what is happening in the game. And while I didn't catch it from some of the dialogue trees, the spaceship itself is constantly warping you to new galaxies out of your control, even though within the game there's a set path. As you start out in Wild Bastards, you'll have access to two characters, that being Doc Casino and Spider Rosa. I'm probably going to mess up some of the names along the way because I didn't quite remember everyone, but needless to say, these characters work like different weapons in a standard FPS game. So Doc Casino has access to a double-barreled shotgun, and Spider Rosa has two six-shooters. The two of them have their own specific move styles. They'll have stats relegated to health, damage, output, whatever that are different between them. And then they also have a special ability called a trick shot in the game, but it's pretty equatable to, say, an ultimate in Overwatch. What that trick shot will do depends on the character. In Doc Casino's instance, he has what's called roulette, where he instantly kills one random character on the map. It leaves a devastating explosion in its wake too, so if other characters are bunched up with them, they'll die too. Spider Rosa's leaves a decoy, so you can distract enemies and then get the drop on them by moving around. What I didn't know going in is that developer Blue Manchu is comprised of team members from Irrational Games. So they actually did work on not only Bioshock, but one of my favorite tactical shooters, SWAT 4. If you go into Wild Bastards expecting this to be a boomer shooter, <laughs> just forget it. You're going to get absolutely annihilated by running out into the wild and the enemies are just, they're a bit hopped up on piss and vinegar. <laughs> now, for someone like me who has a pretty decent skill level when it comes to tactical shooters and even boomer shooters in general, I didn't find the game to be particularly hard. I started on what is called the hard setting, which is the second highest one. There's a very hard setting, and since I believe this was a true roguelike in that I had no control over how I would upgrade or what levels I would be playing, I figured, you know, I don't want to put it up very hard. I want to learn the game. Um, 
I mean, I've read that some people have problems on easy even. So this is definitely going to be a very skill dependent game, which is nice. I, I like that in my shooters. Regardless of the skill level, you have to approach Wild Bastards like a tactical shooter. When I had read a comment from someone pointing out that Irrational Games team members were behind this, then the SWAT connection clicked and that's how I started to approach it. In SWAT 4, you could not just blindly run into rooms and start shooting. You would either wind up dead or you'd get civilians killed and be heavily penalized. Eventually in SWAT 4 even, you wouldn't be able to progress because your score was too low. Now Wild Bastards isn't that ridiculous with the score system or anything, but the enemies are highly accurate and most of the time highly aggressive. There is a very wide range of different enemy types, thankfully. So combat is consistently engaging, though I think the faults of Wild Bastards are more some of its underbaked systems and how the game kind of... I don't want to make this sound worse than it is, but it sort of belabors the point. As I was playing through the game, after about five hours, I pretty much saw everything Wild Bastards has to offer. It's nice getting new characters because they introduce new abilities and new weapons and so on and so forth, but the general flow of Wild Bastards doesn't change up much from when you start. In the beginning, it's kind of unassuming and I think that the two main characters you start with are probably not the best picks. Doc Casino can become ridiculously powerful with certain upgrades, but Spider Rosa is more a support type. Having that right off the bat doesn't give you the best impression of how Wild Bastards combat will evolve over time. What generally happens is that on the Drifter you'll get warped into a new galaxy map that has a random layout of different planets you can visit. Those planets then have things called aces, beans, and just general loot. The aces are what you typically want to gun for because those will upgrade your outlaws, or the bastards as they refer to themselves. They'll give you charged aces, which act as a temporary buff on each planet. And then they'll also give you core aces, which are not a full-on upgrade, but a general stat buff to one category. It can be a lot to take in at first, but once you get the hang of it, that's pretty much all Wild Bastards is. You go to these different planets, you find the loot, and then you leave. When on the planet, it kind of plays out almost like Civilization in that it's sort of turn-based. You can bunch up your different outlaws together or send them all individually so you have a wider range of turns, but essentially each outlaw is given between five to ten moves on each turn. And during those turns, they can go to shops or find loot or the aces that I mentioned. Or sometimes there's a secured hold that has even greater loot. There will also be enemy strongholds you'll need to get by, which then triggers the FPS combat. Eventually, after so many turns, the main villain's children will start to chase you down. Now, at first, the game warns you. These characters are super powerful and they're probably going to annihilate you. You know, so I figured, hey, I don't want to deal with that. And you don't have to. That's one of the nice elements about Wild Bastards. It's an emergent bit of gameplay where you can get strategic with how you maneuver. If you don't want to face McNeil, then you could kind of set one bastard to go in X direction and lead him down that path while the others head for the exit. Stuff like that is fun, and I think it's a clever usage of this different map that's a totally different game in and of itself. But eventually, your characters become so powerful that these... They're not endlessly respawning, per se, but they will show up on each planet each time, regardless of whether or not you've killed them. And, like, the game telling me, oh no, McNeil's come, you better get off the planet. Like, McNeil's a joke. It didn't take me very long to kill him, and the first time I was forced to face him, which can happen every now and then, I was stunned that he went down like a chump. And then his... Brother and sister went down like chumps too. And I think that just speaks to some of the balancing issues that Wild Bastards has. Because that general gameplay loop never truly changes into anything meaningful, Wild Bastards just becomes sort of a mindless type of game. While there are certainly more elements you can dig into, and obviously raising the difficulty should have been something I did, I just feel that by the midway point, Wild Bastards doesn't have much else going on. The writing's fun, I like that the enemies will shout stupid things, and obviously the graphical style, as you can see, is amazing. I like that kind of comic booky sort of 2D animation. You know, the characters don't move with 
a billion frames, they're a little limited, so it looks funky and it's fun. I don't know, unless you really, really, really like hero shooters, which is something I'm not a big fan of. I don't particularly think any of the characters are outstanding in their own right. I like some of their weapons, obviously. Doc Casino has more going on than just a double barrel. He's also got some inherent ability where his type of ammo will be mixed up each time he goes into a showdown. So sometimes you'll have penetrating shells, other times you'll have double the ammo, sometimes you'll even have a shorter spread. And when you upgrade Doc to a shorter spread, forget it. He's probably the best character in the game. Apart from him, I really like Smokey because anything that does a damage over time buff is great. I liked Preach because she has a fully automatic chain gun. I really liked Roswell because, again, he had a fully auto pistol and it had no reload. So these things are cool elements, but ultimately because the game is so stagnant in how it progresses, See, that's why I wanted to do this as a raw review. It's hard to put into words exactly how I feel. I don't think Wild Bastards is bad. I actually think it's quite good. And for certain people that don't gel with boomer shooters or even military styled ones, I think Wild Bastards would be a good jumping on point for getting into the genre. It's just that coming off the back of Void Bastards, which definitely had more going on, Wild Bastards seems simplified to a degree. It just gets repetitive by the end. There's even one other system where on the Drifter, your outlaws can get into feuds or they'll become pals or whatever. When they're pals, they'll have a special ability on the planet where if one's taking damage, the other will provide assistance. And I mean, all of that's fine in theory, but it never really pans out to much of anything, especially the feud system, which obviously when characters are feuding, they can't jump down to a planet with each other, but eventually you're going to have so many outlaws that that never really matters and the currency that fixes these feuds beans becomes way too plentiful by the end uh when you jump to each new sector you can't take anything with you other than aces because aces are permanent buffs to your character so you'll lose any of the mods you get for your weapons or your currency like the cram i believe it's called or tonics that restore health whatever you'll lose all of that jazz but the game warns you hey, do you want to use your beans before? So obviously, yeah, why would you not use them? And because I would have like six or seven cans of beans at one time, basically all my characters were happy with each other by the end. So there was no real point to that system. You're like, oh, a character's feuding, I just feed them beans, never mind. And that's what I'm talking about where I say there are certain lacking elements within Wild Bastards. I do not think that developer Blue Manchu has no idea what they're doing or anything hyperbolic like that. It's just that the game does feel a little undercooked in certain elements. Once you complete the game too, there's nothing else truly unlocked. You can start the campaign in what's called Iron Man mode, which I think makes it a bit harder in that your outlaws don't restore health in between jumps or I don't know exactly what, but completing the campaign you unlock Super Iron Man, which then adds further debuffs to you where some outlaws might just be permanently feuding or they won't restore their charge days in between jumps and if they die on the planet they're pretty much out for that sector you know it's cool things like that there's also a procedural campaign where the order of progression that you unlock the different outlaws is switched up which i think should have been the main game you also get challenge modes which work exactly like in civilization you have a set sector with set units and you have to just get to the end of it. Apart from that, nothing is dramatically different in Wild Bastards. It's kind of the same thing for a bit too long. The game's not overly long. It took me around, I want to say 11 and a half hours. And you know, that's pretty decent, especially for the price, which is $35, I believe. So overall, I did enjoy Wild Bastards. I think it is a pretty good strategy shooter. I don't believe it captures the essence of SWAT, even though it has some of that going on. And it certainly isn't a boomer shooter, so approaching it like that will see you sorely disappointed. But if you meet Wild Bastards halfway there, you will be greeted with a campaign that is engaging for a good six-ish hours, and even then has solid writing and great art. There's really not much else I could truly ask for, but I do hope that should there be a successor that more closely links to this, as Void Bastards is almost a completely different game, 
that Blue Manchu works a bit harder to ensure that all their systems interlink properly.